Hello everybody and welcome back to Comsden Farm. Today, we've got some weeds to kill and I've bought a new toy. This then is my new weed killer. It's a sprayer, but because we're running precision farming, it means that I can enable the spot spraying, which uses 90% less herbicide than normal. So this thing is proper awesome. Now, as you can see here on Jimmy's field, yeah, there's a lot of weeds in here. And it's the same with our own field. They've got to be tackled. We need to get rid of them because a couple of months have passed since we were last here because there's not really much to do apart from I did cut some grass, did make some silage bales, and we have got a stack of silage bales ready to go and sell. So you're probably thinking, well, how do I afford this then? Well, I have actually gone and bought this, and that's why it looks pretty cool. It's in the JCB colors. Look at this. Very nice piece of kit. Now, because it's spot spraying, Literally, it's got 2,700 liters of herbicide in here. And I really don't think we're going to need to worry too much about well, topping this up anytime soon. Because this thing won't spray out all the nozzles. It will just spray out the nozzles where it detects a weed. You pay a bit more for that. But luckily, when I did the grass last time, I managed to get two lots of silage bales. So I sold one, which allowed me to buy this. I sold some eggs and I sold some wool. Look at that. How cool is that? So we have got one more stack of silage bales ready to sell if need be. But I just thought we'll get straight into this. We'll go turn this on. And as you can see, it won't do anything until it detects weeds. This is proper cool. So you can see just the odd nozzles are spraying every so often. So instead of wasting it, it literally does. You pay for it to detect the weeds. Now, watch it don't go too far out there. It's so cool. So, you only get the spot spray. And this is what I've mentioned on Somerset that I wanted to try and do. But unfortunately, this only works, which I didn't realize at the time, which is part of precision farming. So, you can see, we just don't use anything at all, even a field this side. So, I think... What's going to be good then is we'll just leave the herbicide in here like I've done before. We'll just use these kind of sprayers for herbicide only. We have got another one for like lime, another one for fertilizer. We'll just use that. So let's run around. Let's get this done. Let's kill some weeds. And then I've got to show you something new. Well, that's the weed killing all done. And I've got to say, that is a very nice setup. So them sprayers are normal sprayers that you can use for normal fertilizer or herbicide. But obviously, when you're doing precision farming, you get the spot spraying as well. I think it's actually stop and spray. I keep calling it spot spraying, but it, it is spot spraying because it detects the weed underneath and only turns on that nozzle and the jet to jet the herbicide onto that weed rather than taking up like spraying the whole boom across saves you so much herbicide and these are still pretty much full and we got down to about what 85 percent nothing at all 
so good very nice piece of kit speaking of nice piece of kits look at this thing i bought i am turning into a proper farmer now i have got a slurry spreader this thing does chuck it out the back it's got a uh, splash plate there very nice 40,000 liters it holds just everything's in like john deere colors john deere not john deere is it oh dear disgraceful jcb colors john deere's green and yellow what how did i get that mixed up it is nice i wanted to try it because obviously the cows are producing a lot of slurry and i thought we need something to do with it now you can't just sell it you don't get much for it so i thought this might come in handy to put slurry on the grass field might be good that might because something we can use it for and on the grass field we don't have to worry too much about if it's good or bad use the more expensive fertilizer the proper crop fields and use slurry and this thing on the grass fields so i did get myself some more silage bales so we've got 16 here i've already taken one trailer load to be sold which has allowed me to get the sprayer for the herbicide now if you're wondering where these come from let me show you it came from this field here now i helped michael out i cut the grass for him a couple of times and we've got some bales left over so this is what i was doing then in the last couple of months then while we we're just waiting for things to progress and obviously for the uh, crops in these fields just behind these trees here to germinate and obviously get some weeds so i managed to get two stacks of 16 silage bales now i did think and i might have said before that i was tempted you can see look there you are evidence there i've left some over i was tempted to have this field myself this is field number 10 it's not a bad field i'm just not sure if this is something i really wanted there were contracts that i did so you've got contracts got some bales left over but I'm, i just don't think it's it's good enough or big enough so i might have got my hands on something else so it seems like jimmy's wife has been spreading the word that i'm helping her out and i've taken on jimmy's field which is this one just here so because she spread it around that i'm helping and i'm renting this field off her well let's just say i've had a few people knocking on my doors to see if i want to help them this i got approached by gerald who owns this field Currently, doesn't own it anymore i do only leasing it off him basically the same way as i'm doing for jimmy's wife gerald has got this field getting a little bit old decided doesn't want it anymore so it was basically approached me to see if i want to lease it off him and i thought what's going to be best here do i go for field 10 and have that as my grass field or do we have this because this could be used for well everything it's a nice field to put crops in but also put grass in now grass we're going to get a lot of cuts off a lot of bales silage money that's what i'm thinking we have already got two fields at the minute we've got this one which is full of sorghum and just over there our own field which i actually own that one that's full of soybeans so we're going to get a lot of straw off these as well now we have got contracts that we can do to help other people out a bit like i did with the grass for michael but this one i now own lease it anyway it's my field to use for now as long as we keep up with the lease so we need to put something in the ground but before we do that then i'm going to take these silage bales and i'm going to sell them and i thought i'm going to bring you along with me as well so you can see a silage sale so let's go and auto load these onto here there we go they're all on so we just need to go and have a look now where is going to be the best place for silage so i don't need to worry too much about keeping silage bales because i have got enough in the barn that you know to, for the, the tmr for the cow food we don't need to worry about keeping any of these so we can actually go and sell these uh, the best time is going to be in jan where are we now or what, what are we in oh, we're in july so yeah we're pretty much as low as we can get at the minute but unfortunately we, we need to sell them so what's looking good so four five nine four six two four six six four seven one to sell everything oh beautiful that's in a nice tight place okay let's jump in the cab let's head on so to sell everything then is by our sheep field so we've got to try and get well this trailer yeah look at the size of that we've got to try and get this in there 
Oh joy. This should be interesting. Not exactly in the best place. We've got to try and get around here first. Woo wee. Up the grass. Coming through the little village. Ask Jimmy's wife. Give a little peep of the horn. <laughs> we've got to get we've got to get in here. Is it me or was that sheep? I'm in a bit of a, a judder. Yeah, look, the, sh the sheep are. Oh, that's weird. When you're in the in the cab looking through the window, the sheep are stuttering. But outside, they're perfect. Anyway, getting slightly distracted. Let's see if we can get this in. This isn't going to happen, is it? Not going to happen at all. We go over here a little bit. That's never going to fit. Oh, dear. Let me get this all in. Okay, we're in. The only one thing I don't like about this trailer is it's just, it is so big. Let's see if we can maybe back down there. That might be better. If we turn around here, because it's going to be tight down there. Can we borrow this person's drive? Excuse me. A little C2 there. Let's see if we can go and back up. It's the only thing I don't like about this trailer is it's just, it's great. It does everything I want. But it's so long. Could we not have maybe gone for something smaller? and stack the bales up like three high instead of two high i can't see nothing behind i don't know if anybody's cars parked there we're running over someone's grass i'm hoping we're going to be okay you wouldn't think judge done how i'm controlling this i drive trucks for a living that is my that is my normal day-to-day -day job i say day-to-day -day job i work nights that is my, that's my normal job there we go so this is the cell point here it's in a wonderful place so let's just spin around so we can see what's going on. So we're going to unload. We'll move these bales over. We'll uh, drop them down. The controls are all back to front. And we'll let them go. And they should sell. 71,507 and nearly 5 grand environmental score. That's put us at 111,000 in the bank. That's not bad. So I think I said on the last episode or the one before that about filling it up with fuel. Now I put so much fuel in here, it was a thousand liters. And I said, I wonder how much it's gonna be to fill up the tractor. Well, it took nearly half of that. And obviously I've topped up it a little bit again. We're down to 3% in here, 310 liters left. Wow, fuel just goes nowhere. Now I am tempted to get a fuel trailer, which allows us basically to take a trailer out in the field to sort of you know fill up machines i'm not sure if it's worth it or if it's just going to be a waste of money when we have got fuel tanks like this sort of scattered around on both farms so do we really need it maybe not let's just have a quick little uh, update in here then in case you're, you're wondering from last time all the grass bales are now in all are looking pretty good uh got some more hay so that field i said number 10 i'm gonna actually do a hay cut off it and also a grass cut off it which is pretty good Silage bales are all doing okay. We don't really need... You can see why I got rid of the silage bales. We don't need to worry about any more of these. We don't really need any more straw, but I'm going to sort of top them up a little bit. Uh, we're okay for grass. So, yeah, we don't really need to do too many. So, do we really need to put grass in that big field? What could we put in that field? Well, looking on the calendar, the only things we've got are in green, which are coming up soon. In September, we've got wheat we could put in, barley. Next month in August, we can put some canola in or oats in September, or we could go right down to the bottom. And obviously, we've got the grass and stuff like that. But linseed, we could put some linseed in in September, but then we would have to wait till July next year before we can do anything with that. But in saying that, it is pretty much going to be the same for the rest of them. September, August time, we're going to have to wait till this time next year before we get anything from them. Is that, see, that's the problem. Is that going to be good? Because we are trying our best. I've not, as of yet, Swear down, not had to use any loan. I can go and show you. You see the loan, there's no loan, zero. It's all our own money. Doing little contracts and stuff like that. I'm not sure what to do because if we put a crop in, we might get more money, but then we might be able to get a few grass cuts off for silage bales. And obviously that goes pretty much all year round. Apart from winter, it does slow down in winter. But then we can't do any crops, can't do anything in winter, so. Ooh, it's a tough one. So I found a simple solution then to, uh, well, trying to get into that tight space to sell bales. 
I've moved it here. So all it was is this that I put in. I thought that might be a nice sort of nice place to get to. Something different. Yeah, a little bit challenging actually when you've got a bale trailer the size we have. So all I've done is moved it up here with the sawmill and you know, there's a cell point in there. There's another one there and one around the other side. Top of the map where we sort of come to many times before for wall. Yeah, just put it here. Obviously it's not, oh, it's cost me a thousand pounds to put in and obviously sold the other one so give me the thousand pound back. So I've not lost anything and obviously this is going to be a bit more room. There's no other real trailer that I could get that does Heston Bales. The only other option I could do would be to get rid of the Heston Baler, go for the quick baler that we did before, the round one that wraps itself and get a smaller trailer. But then, yeah, everything's measured out for the Hestons for the uh, the TMR. So, yeah, easy solution. Move the cell point. So this is the seed that I've gone for then. It's my usual one I normally go for. I did look at the horse one that we used in a previous episode, but... I just like this thing. Plus, you can colour it as well. So, we've gone for... It's not actually JCB. It's down as corn yellow. It's very close, though. It's close as I'm going to get. And I'll see. We've got black wheels. Looks good. So, it's a little bit smaller than normal. So, it might take a little bit longer. But I do like this thing. So, we're just coming into here, then, where I've got my uh, my seat tender. And also, new racking, which I'm not sure if I'm showing off yet. So new racking then just to sort of keep the seeds and that all uh, nice and tidy. So we'll just sort of, we'll get this. I can't pick it up. Okay, now I can. Let's just go move these over. You know what? <laughs> I forgot it does that. Okay, let's try that again. Let's just go this time. We'll, we'll walk it this way and don't put it near where it's going to auto load it straight in. That was a mistake. Okay, let's just get some seed. I think we're going to need a lot of this, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to need a couple of them. So we'll get these in here. We'll uh, we'll jump back into the tractor. And then we'll see if we can uh, load these in. See how much it's going to take. So the seeder is all nice and full now. Our seed and fertilizer. And yeah, the racking's gone. It was one of them mad late night ideas. that I thought, ooh, what's some racking in here? It'd be quite nice. It took a while to get in, as you can imagine. I just thought it would keep the bags tidy. But then if I keep doing that and keep using bags and keeping it tidy, this is just going to sit here collecting dust. And we need to really use this. So what I'm going to do is just keep the bags in here loose and then we'll just keep that topped up. And if we need to fill up, we'll bring that thing out. Because that's kind of the whole point. I've got it. So at least I got my money back on the racking, which is pretty good. Right, we'll shut that up. We'll do this. We'll start this. Let's head to the field. Let's start putting some grass in. So we are all set up in the field then. Grass is selected. Let's go and sort the worker out. Get the worker started on this one. Got no nitrogen on the field. So we're going to have to put some in. But that's not an issue. This could take a little while. So it's putting 240 kilograms per hectare in at the minute. Yeah, as you can see. we got quite a big field to do. Not ridiculous in size. But definitely a lot better than that field 10. It was, a, it was an okay field, but I just think this one's going to be good. Just think how many bales we're going to get off this bad boy. Yeah, this is going to be good. I just think it'd be nice, but if we want to do them for ourselves, or if we want to just do them and sell them, this, I just think, is going to be the perfect kind of field for that. Especially for selling them. Imagine the silage bales off here. Woo-wee. So... I'm going to let the worker crack on with that one because I need to go sign some papers. As of now, we now have a new field to add on to our contract leasing list. It just seems like everybody in this whole area just doesn't want their fields anymore. So Emily doesn't want this one. Too much work for it. As you can see, it is a heck of a field. It's just going to take a little wander around it. My word. Now, it does seem not too big when you're sort of up here it's still a fair size and you can you can see that's a fair size but obviously when you're actually walking through the field yeah that, that that's it's massive that is a field of linseed so we get to have a go at linseed it does look pretty good so this is our field to do what we want with so we can use this obviously we just pay for it on a monthly Really got to be careful, otherwise we're going to start racking up more going out than actually coming in with all these kind of crops. So, 
let's just go down and have a walk from corner to corner through the field so you can just see the scale of this. So I am going to run through fairly fast just to show you. you see now as you can see that this is sort of been done by the game it's not gone right to the edges a lot of field actually wasted here. So when we put something back in here we'll be able to uh, at least benefit from the whole field. But anyway let's just go through and have a look from corner to corner. Let's just run through. Oh my word. Yeah, that's that's a fair <laughs> size. No wonder Emily doesn't want to do anything with this field. My word. Are we near the corner yet? Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, it's just, we're going a little bit off corner, but yeah. Look at that. Okay, that is a massive field. I wonder how many litres of linseed we're going to get off from, from this. Look at them. So it's just a normal harvester. I'm not sure. I don't think we can get straw off this. But that's not an issue. We have got two fields that we're going to get straw off. Wow. So, next episode, this is straight away we're going to jump in. We're going to obviously lease or rent a uh, harvester. And we're going to tackle this and see what we get out of this. Now, I did get myself a new trailer. This thing looks really nice. Now, because of this map, as we've seen, that it's a bit tricky to get big equipment around the map. But the other trailer, because it had three axles, it was a lot longer and it was sort of sticking out here a lot. It was a bit tricky to get around. Now, it did have a, a modified capacity in it. This one is the same. I have slightly tweaked the capacity. It will hold 125,000 liters in it, but it's just smaller, physically smaller still a big capacity so we can actually get it around these roads a lot better and as you can see it's been colored in jcb so yeah that'd be nice to use that we'll use that on the linseed and just see what we actually get in there see do you think are we going to be able to fill it 125,000 liters i really don't know linseed seems a lot but it's the in-game linseed so we've not planted it we've not looked after it it's not had any care on it i don't think anyway it's not something we can really tell, but actually, you know what? We might be able to go and have a look and see when we walk through the field. So let's have a quick look and just see. Has he got any fertilizer or pH on it at all? So I have just quickly gone and got the soil sampler to do a little test on this because technically we own the field now, so it will work. It doesn't work on fields you don't own, apart from the one I've got. It's got the quite big size, so sometimes you will grab someone else's field as well. So yeah, as I kind of thought, it's had nothing done to it as you can see ph bad nitrogen bad it's just it's all horrendous so the soil's not bad this down of the sort of area of the map it's not bad actually if you look just right on the very border a bit of salty clay the rest of it in the middle loam sandy loam loamy sand that's all not bad actually so this field does have potential it just needs to be treated so there's a bit of a, a dodgy way to get into this field as well you have to sort of come through this little dirt track here just skirting someone else's field and then it will take you sort of down to a road no actual like direct road to our field you have to come through this way so this now will bring us out onto a little road here just through this little gateway back down here and then as we go down this way it'll bring us out to sort of that junction where if we turn left we'll r run past the church with the music playing so, yeah, this is somewhere we either might have to get a harvester here or what I might do is I might rent it and actually get it delivered straight to the field because this could be interesting. You see through here, the church is just down there to the left. If we come back up this way here, we'll obviously go through the village. Past our cow shed, which is just up there on the right. Through the village. Past Jimmy's wife. Past our sheep pasture and back up then to our main farm. So I don't think that's too bad at all. That I think that'll be a good one. We'll get something for the linseed. I don't know exactly what we're going to get for that. But then once we sort of treat that field, I think that'd be pretty good. It's got potential to be a good field. It's just not really been looked after. And that's the problem. So if it had been treated with nitrogen and pH then that harvest of that linseed could be a real good one. I'm hoping it's still going to be okay, but I'm just not too sure. No treatment on it at all. Uh, it doesn't potentially... 
it's going to go well, I don't think, but hey, we'll see. Let's just turn that off. A little bit dirty. We'll shut this down. We're just going to have a quick check on the worker, and then I think that's probably going to wrap it up today because that worker is going to take a while to do that field. Then we'll come back in the next one and we'll tackle the linseed field. So the worker's not doing too bad at all on here. Headlands have gone round. Now you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, there's a patch been missed there on the left. What's he doing? It's a method you can do on course play where you can have it do like go round and stripe up and down you can do lands which is what this is now and it sort of it will go down here then it should come back and probably do that strip and then it will come back and it, it just it leaves little bits in the middle and sort of weaves in and out it's just a, a different way of doing it now there's a few bits on the corners that it's missed but it seems to do that I don't know why but we can just go back at the end and uh just, you know, tweak them a little bit, go over them a little bit. But at least it's sorting out the nitrogen. So you can see the nitrogen was looking quite bad, but it's, again, it's grass, so it's not gone much better because it doesn't really need it. You can see, obviously, this one down here, this is a sorghum field. And obviously, this one, soya beans, don't really need it, so that's why it's, it looks a lot, it's probably the darkest one out of all, isn't it? The reddest one out of all. This one's perfect. This one's just getting sorted, and you can see, there you go, the worker's now going back to finish off the strip. So once he's done this strip, he should then go back and follow it on the other side. So we'll let him get to the end, and we'll see what he what he does then. So the worker's just got to the end of that run. Let's see what he does now. A few little bits on the corners, like I said, but um, that's not too bad. Seems to be some corners seem to be a little bit sharper than others. Doesn't seem to be missing any on that one over there. So the worker now should run down here. But then he won't come straight back like, on himself. He'll, he'll move over a bit and come back up and leave a gap again. It's just another method you can do in course play. And I think it just works well. It doesn't really make a difference. It just makes it a bit easier. The worker's not going to turn his sharp to double back on himself. So it can just help sometimes and make it a lot easier. So we'll wait till he gets to the end of this one. Then we'll just see what he does then. So just at the end of that run. What's he going to do now? Yeah, you see, doesn't go straight back on himself. Leaves a bit of a gap. And does another pass down. Do you know what? This field's not actually taking as long as I thought. I thought this was going to take quite a while, but there's a good chunk of the field's already been done. So, we'll let the work carry on. I think we will leave it there. Hopefully next time we should have quite a few fields to harvest. We've got the linseed field that we've taken off Emily. I'm hoping soon Jimmy's field should be done and our own soya beans. I'm hoping if I can try and get them all sorted and like ready to harvest at the same time so we can lease the harvester and do all of them in one go. That's going to be quite an episode. We might have to stretch that over two episodes, but we'll see what happens. So we're going to leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're enjoying these episodes, then please do give it a thumbs up if you've made it this far to the end of the episode. And if you would be so kind... To hit the subscribe it really does help i am trying to build my subscribers up if i can we'll let this worker carry on i will see you in the next episode